This video is brought to you by T Blocks. Enjoy the content now, but stay for the shilling later. Welcome to Lobster Magnet and Friends with just me. Um, <laughs> I'll see if I can get Goro for these reviews in the future, but it's going to be difficult. Um, and we are here to the beginning of My Hero Academia Season 3, the much anticipated Season 3, and as I promised, I'm going to cover all of it. And oh man, oh man, what a goddamn terrible way to kick off the season. It was like, you know, the devil's duo, the devil's twosome of a flashback and filler. <laughs> this is the worst way to do this. You've got more than enough manga material. Um, you know, I, I if my prediction holds, I, I was 100% right with like how many episodes they covered in um, last season, and they pretty much ended on the exact chapter I said they would. So my instinct tells me that this chapter or this season will probably end um, with the hero provisional license arc. That'll probably be the end point because um, that'll basically cover like three major arcs and the sub arcs in between transitional arcs in between them. It'll cover the um, the field training. It'll cover the hideout raid and it'll cover the provisional license hero exam. And that's like all that content is a little over 50 chapters. And the last season covered, um, whatchamacallit, uh, covered the uh, UA Sports Festival, uh, covered the Hero Killer arc, and it covered the uh, final exam arc. So, y you know, that, that seems to be the working formula. And even that season, though, had, like, you know, one filler episode, which I was not a huge fan of. And uh, I'm not a huge fan of this one. It was uh, the only good thing I can say is that, like, oh, we got to see all them sexy UA boys with their shirts off. Which I found interesting in a sort of, like, freak show kind of way. Just because, like, you know, why does, like, the, the Birdman have, like, just this, like, white body, but, like, you know, his head is, like, you know, freaking dark bird. I, I thought his, like, skin tone would match his face, maybe. It, it's just the funniest and weirdest thing. Like, that is obviously a character that was never designed to have his shirt off. Uh, I'm sure Horikoshi didn't really intend to, like, have him stripped down, or, or else he'd put a little bit more thought into his design, other than just, like, sticking a stupid bird head on, like, a human body. And it just looks really, really dumb and kind of lazy. This is a character that was not meant to be, um, you know, stripped down to, like, go swimming. And here we go. And then we get to see the tentacle guy, who looks weird without a shirt on. And, yeah, we get to see all them boys with, uh, you know, their shirts off, and, um... You know, that, that, that's something interesting. It was a nice little gag with little Minetta and the electricity guy. You know, oh, we're going to see the girls in their swimsuits. And then they're in, like, you know, formal UA gear. So they're all, like, one seat suits. And there's no, um, I think half of this was inspired by, like, that one gag page from, like, insert in the volume about the Summer of Hope where... You know, whatchamacallit, um, they thought that they would uh, get to see all the UA girls in their swimsuits, uh, and it was like just a one-page gag thing, and uh, yeah, this is uh, suitably mediocre and disappointing, and, and uh, I'm not even going to try and get Goro to like come in to watch this, because this was a complete waste of goddamn time. Jesus effing Christ, man. Ugh. Come on, my hero. I know you, you got enough material. You got the production time. <laughs> you didn't need this episode. Why did we get this episode? I, I hope this is the only, like, filler episode we get in the entire season. Because there's plenty of good material. I mean, at least we got to see the new theme song. That was that was kind of good. I like the new theme song. Well, the song wasn't so great. I just like the animation. I'm always a sucker for, like, seeing the shit. You know, uh, there's this... You know, unintended elitism you get when you watch something adapted into something else. And that, you know, you're the master versus the plebeians who just watch the anime. You read the manga. You know the, the thing in its original source material, so you know everything that's going to go on. So when you see, like, those intros, you're like a manga master race person. You're kind of like, oh, ha, 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 I can't wait. Uh, one for all is going to make his appearance. And I know all those fights and what they're alluding to. Ha, ha, this is so great. I love it. I'm so much better than you. Ha, 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 ha. You will be surprised about the incredible plot developments that I can't wait to see. <laughs> ah, yes. Um, 
I don't know. Maybe there's someone out there who liked it. Um, I, I'd be very surprised. I mean, you could say it's like clever in terms of how they use the framing device of going to each character as an excuse to like, you know, use the flashbacks where they like go to Ida. It's like, I didn't think much of you, Midoriya, but then you were great in the hero killer arc. And here's a bunch of clips, flashback clips from that arc. <laughs> so I guess props in that regard, a somewhat limited extent, you know, congratulations. You, you, you did a good job of um, stretching out your nothing material uh, and that something vaguely consequential, kind of. Uh, by using that sort of framing device, I'm sure whoever was scripting this was uh, have, having a, you know, patting themselves on the back. But uh, yeah, this is a boring, inconsequential uh, waste of time and a terrible way to kick off the new season. And I hope the next episode uh, reverses that trend. It looks like we're going straight into manga material. I hope they don't stretch it out before the good stuff comes because they've got a lot of good stuff to go into and, you know, had a year to, like, work on this. I don't, I don't know why it's... Ugh, please don't suck. Please don't suck. Don't ruin, you know, the big moment we're all waiting for, us Manga Master Race people. Uh, don't, don't, don't fuck that up. Please, please, for the love of God, don't fuck that up. Um, but uh, fingers crossed that it doesn't suck. I, I hope it doesn't suck. Uh, this was certainly... Completely disappointing and awful. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, I'd give it a four. Four out of ten. I'm sure if Goro was here, we could probably tear it apart more. Because uh, it's fun to tear it apart with a buddy. But for me, it was just, like, a boring waste of time. It was like, it's not a good sign when I'm, like, looking at it, the, like, the, the streaming bar to see how many more minutes are to go. It's like, is this over yet? Please tell me this is over. I want this to be over. So effing badly. And you're just looking at it, and it's like, oh, God, it's not over. It's not over yet. Fuck. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Um, so, yeah, uh, this episode sucked. Um, if you defend it, uh, please let me know in the comments below if you agree with me that it was a completely unneeded filler slash flashback clip show. Then, uh, yeah, let's all hate on it in the comments below as we wait for the real premiere next week for the good shit. Uh, don't disappoint us, Bones. Come on, you got a, you got a winning formula here. Don't don't, don't ruin it. God, I, I wonder, like, because apparently there's like these uh, My Hero Academia life light novels, which are basically like filler in novel form, in prose form. Although they have a few illustrations from Horikoshi, and they're they're just basically like the UA students, like you know, hanging out and doing like kid stuff, high school kid stuff. And, and I th 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 I wonder if this had an, was it an adaptation of any of that material, but um. Yeah, th those are basically, like, approved fan fiction, and this was fan fiction, and it was boring and terrible. So yeah, uh, 4 out of 10. Fuck this filler. Fuck this flashback. Filler flashback arc. And on to next week, when we'll hopefully have better material. So thank you for listening, and remember, lobsters and tennis, don't you grab it. Do you like clothes but hate shopping? Then T-Blocks is the subscription service for you. But I know what you're thinking. But Lobster, how is that any different than Loot Crater and other subscription services? Well, T-Blocks sends you t-shirts, which is clothing, which is actually useful, unlike the useless swag junk that Loot Crate keeps peddling on gullible schmucks. And this isn't just knockoff brand crap. T-Blocks hooks you up with licensed shirts for all the stuff you love, because you need clothes. How else are you going to keep your puny human man flesh protected from the elements? T-shirts are useful for any occasion. Wear them. Give them to friends. Give them to enemies. Knit them together. Make a quilt. T-shirts are life. And you know the best part? It'll only cost you $6.99. That's right. You can get 12 shirts sent to you for once a month for only $6.99. And you know what? If ultra-cheap licensed goods are too basic for you, then there's also the Community T-Block set, which features original designs from the best up-and-coming artists, so you can keep that hipster street cred. But I'm here to save you even more money! Use the code LOBSTERTBX at checkout and you'll save 10% on any order. Be a t-shirt wearing God amongst mortals. Use the power of the most expensive seafood to get you the cheapest t-shirts now! Lobsters made of lights!